when growing your design business, eventually you're gonna have to start hiring other people to help you do the work. On this episode, I wanna share why I'm hiring other design subcontractors, how do I pay them, and how I structure the deal with them. What's up and welcome to another segment of Business Time where I share some of the insights of how I run my freelance business and now as I'm growing, hiring other people, I wanna share some of those insights and learning with you. So I've been doing freelance for over 15 years, doing it full time for over five years now and for the past few months, if you've been following along on this channel, you've seen that instead of doing everything myself, which I used to do for years, I've started to hire other designers and other creatives to collaborate with. I actually feel like I'm collaborating with them, not just like delegating work to them. And I really enjoy this collaboration and it also helps me to focus on what my core strengths are while having other people do stuff that they can do better than me. So on the recent project that I've just shared uh, last week, I've collaborated with two creatives, uh, Yambo Studio, we did, which did 3D animation for me, and is also actually interviewed on this channel. Maybe last week I'll have the interview with him. And also Mike from Creative Mints who helped out with the design. So it was really awesome collaboration. I got so many questions about how I hire, how much I pay for the subcontractor. And so I wanted to discuss this with you. So as I said, one of the biggest reasons to hire other people is so that you, you can hire people who do something better than you, specifically 3D or some design aspect, while you can focus on what your core strengths is some people core strengths is actually doing the sales. Me, I feel like doing the strategy, wireframing and thinking about the website, it's, it's a web design project in this case, is my core strengths. And so by having other people working on that aspect of the, on the aspect of the design, I can focus on what I'm good at. So the first step in even hiring people is having people that you know, that you trust and you wanna hire. And so to have that, I kinda of have basically a database of people that I would like to collaborate with in the future. It's basically a spreadsheet of people that I've seen their work and their portfolio and I have their, their contact info. And basically some of them, I try to start having been building a relationship with them before even I need to hire them. So in that case, I, a lot of times I just reach out to people who I see like a great portfolio and I'll ask them to, to get on a call and I explain to them, hey, my name is Ron, I'm working on these type of projects. And in the future, I think that we might have an interesting collaboration. I wanted to hear about how you work, how you price yourself, we kind of build a relationship because the reason that I do that is that I understood that when real projects come, sometimes I have to work on fast kind of like timelines and then it's not, it's not really ideal to reach out to somebody for the first time where you don't have any context about how they work, how they price their work, what their ability looks like. And so having building the relationship up front before you actually need to hire them, I think this is key. So again, as I said, I have this kind of like spreadsheet with the people that I trust, I like their work, I might, I'm starting to build a relationship with them. Most of them I've also already reached out to them, already got on kind of a, on a call or like a video call because there are obviously there are people from all around the world there. So basically on that initial call, as I said, I also ask them usually how they price and different, you know, freelancers or agencies price differently. Some of them price hourly, some of them price based on value or based on the project. Um, and so I'm writing in the spreadsheet usually how they price their work and my method usually when I approach them with a project is to, because I'm doing value pricing, which I talk about a lot on the, on the channel, I usually have a fixed price for the, for the clients and the client doesn't really know how much of that is going into my subcontractors. And to be super honest, when we begin the project, I don't really know as well exactly how much the subcontractors are gonna work, uh, are, are gonna cost because when I'm pricing the project, I'm not even sure about who I'm going to hire. You know, I, I'm not sure at that point when I'm pricing the project, if we're gonna need illustration or if we're gonna need 3D uh, visualization or, or whatever. So I can really be, you know, very, very specific. And so I'm taking, I'm taking the risk on me. Obviously I'm adding buffer to the price, but I'm taking the risk on me that the client has a 
fixed price that they'll pay me. Out of that, I'm gonna have to pay my subcontractors. So what I do when I'm doing my uh, estimation for the project, and I've also shared this in a video, I have kind of a spreadsheet of um, estimates versus you know what really happens. And so in my estimates, I estimate how much each subcontractor will have. So it can be, and usually it's, it's around a fixed price that I can estimate based on, as I said, I know their, their hourly rate or their shift rate, whatever they price their work. And I can say, I think it's going to take whatever, four shifts or something like that. And I can estimate this is going to be $2,000, $3,000 or something like that. Now, usually what I found that works well for my, for my perspective is that when I reach out to, um, to a subcontractor to hire them for a specific project, I find that it's really helpful to tell them what my budget is. Like I've budget three thousand dollars for this for this work, and then we can start the discussion about can you do this for this price? And then you know I find that it's really helpful and it's also pretty fair um, because they know upfront what I have to spend on this, and then we can discuss whether it's feasible, whether it's profitable, whether it works for them. And also, I feel like sometimes when my clients do that with me, it's, it works really well. They can come up to me and say, our budget for this project is $30,000. What can we do with that? And I'll work out a specific plan for that budget. And the same way that is what I'm trying to do with my subcontractors. I'm telling them, this is the budget that we have. Let's try and build a plan for that specific um, budget. It works well sometimes. For example, in the last project that we did, um, you know, that I did with Yambo, for example, he said, okay, the price is where, uh, what we can do with that is we can get like X number of shifts of, you know, 3D and then post-production and then this and that. And he said, I think that we can do a good work under those, you know, with these number of, of shifts. And we started doing that, but we got some feedback from the client and he got a little bit more complicated. And so we felt like, you know, we needed a little bit more shift. And so I told him, look, do do what you have to do. I'll pay a little extra above the budget because I really want this to be to to work out well. And so it the price was a little bit above what I told him that the budget was. And so I guess my profitability for the project uh, diminished a little bit, but it was still within I would say the buffer. And so and and in that case, you know, again, I, for me the quality of the project was very important. And so I was willing to kind of like bite into my profits here um, just to make sure that this project comes out really, really well. Um, yeah, so I think basically this is this is my main takeaway that has worked well for me. Start with a, with a budget and try to work out creatively how can we do something really great within that budget. Sometimes if it's not possible, it might not be possible, you might have to think about alternative. Either working with somebody else, you know, in a different part of the world where it might be cheaper or simplify the idea to make sure that it works within the budget. But either way, trying to work out something within a fixed budget, I find that it works really, really well. When I'm working on an hourly fee, um, which I also did, for example, with Mike, we worked on an hourly fee. For me, I feel it's kind of like, again, because I took the risk on myself in this project and I can't really estimate what the cost is going to be because I have no clue how many hours they're gonna work. Uh, that's a, a little bit more risky on my end because it's hard for me to predict will I be in my budget or not. But um, yeah, you see, you just in that case, you just need to be a little bit more on top on you know asking the subcontractor, so how many hours are, have we done yet? Um, how much do you think that we have? Um, to go and so that's a little bit more tricky i would rather work on project base and i think for most subcontractors that i work with it also works well hope this was helpful for you i'll catch you in the next video Bye.